Microsoft has confirmed that it will end support for Windows 10, including security updates, technical assistance, and feature updates, on the 14th of October 2025. However, not everyone can upgrade their PC to Windows 11 because older hardware does not officially support it due to its higher system requirements. Other options, like switching to a different operating system, such as Linux or Chrome OS, are seen as impractical by most people so lots of people will likely stay on Windows 10 after support ends. This video explores how you can use Windows 10 safely after support ends. Microsoft will not discontinue the functionality of Windows 10 after support ends, and it will continue to work but there will no longer be free security updates or bug fixes from Windows Update to address any vulnerabilities. No one knows how long it will take, but at some point, someone will find a security vulnerability that can be exploited to take over your computer. This will almost always require user interaction, like being tricked into opening a downloaded file, but antivirus software can't address those kinds of vulnerabilities or prevent them from being exploited. Whether it's safe to use Windows 10 after support ends depends on what you use it for and whether you practice safe browsing, like not clicking on suspicious links and not opening downloaded files from unreliable websites. There are some things you can do to protect yourself against these risks and avoid getting infected with malware that takes advantage of vulnerabilities in the core Windows platform. After support ends, Microsoft will still provide security intelligence updates for Windows Defender. These updates ensure that threat definitions for Windows Defender are up to date, protecting you from the latest malware and security threats. They will automatically download and install, so you won't need to manually download and install them. Microsoft will provide these updates until at least October 2028. While Windows 10 itself won't get security fixes and feature updates, the antivirus will continue to get definition updates, allowing it to detect current threats. Even though Windows 10 will no longer receive updates, that doesn't mean you can't keep your apps up to date. Keeping your apps up to date, particularly your web browsers, is important to ensure you receive the latest security fixes and bug fixes, protecting your PC and data. Apps will likely continue to support Windows 10 for years after the official end of support, like they did with Windows XP and Windows 7, and it's unlikely that apps will drop support for Windows 10 immediately. Apps like Google Chrome and Firefox didn't drop support for Windows 7 until 2023. This was after the extended security update program ended, a subscription-based program that allowed users to continue receiving security updates for Windows 7 PCs for up to three years after the official end of support date. Chrome and Firefox have not yet announced when they will stop supporting Windows 10, but we think they will continue to support it until around October 2028, as the extended security updates program for Windows 10 ends at that time. If you plan on using Windows 10 after the end of support, you will need to be careful about what you do online and practice safe browsing. In general, you should avoid installing programs or opening files from unreliable websites, not open any unexpected email attachments, and not click on suspicious links. With these precautions, you can still browse the internet relatively safely. Operating systems that don't receive updates are more vulnerable to malware that could result in data loss. You should consider backing up your files securely, like in a cloud storage service or a USB flash drive, ensuring you can recover your data in case something goes wrong. Regularly backing up your data is one of the most effective ways to protect yourself from this risk. After Microsoft stops supporting Windows 10, it's a good idea to disable any non-essential features that you don't use, as these can pose security risks. For example, if you don't use remote desktop, you can turn it off to prevent unauthorized access. You can also disable Bluetooth if you don't use it, as it's another possible method for unauthorized access. By disabling services and features that you don't use, you reduce the number of possible entry points for malware. If this video was useful for you, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you want to receive notifications whenever new content is posted, you can click on the bell icon after subscribing.